Knowing mm-hmm. you have the MTHFR just makes you aware to be able to do different or better for your body. Me, knowing I have it, I'm very aware that I need the methylated B vitamins because um, I didn't know I had it years ago when I suffered with depression and actually attempted suicide because my depression was so bad. And then when we finally found a doctor that helped me, it was purely like my B9, my B12, my all of my B vitamins were just, t- they were in the tank. I, yeah. you know, and so let's actually talk about really quick, why does the MTHFR, um, play a part in mental health purely because of the B vitamins? Well, that's a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, remember the the job of the MTHFR enzyme, which is produced by the MTHFR gene, is to make methylfolate. Now, you can, I thought that you couldn't get methylfolate from food back in the day. That's wrong. You can get methylfolate from food. You can get methylfolate from liver, meat, um, red meat, especially, and uh, leafy green vegetables. And uh, folic acid is not found in nature, by the way. Folic acid was was created. I don't want to waste time on it, but it's 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 completely man made. Uh, it is not recognized uh, immediately by the human body. It has to be transformed by a gene called dihydrofolate reductase. And so people will incorrectly state that I cannot take folic acid because I have an MTHFR gene variant. Humans are not designed to take folic acid, period, regardless of if having an MTHFR variant or not, because MTHFR gene are, is down here, about seven genes below where folic acid gets introduced in the folate uh, pathway. So dihydrofolate reductase enzyme is the per- primary gene that handles your folic acid. And the researchers looked at folic acid and the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme in mice. Mice have the ability to convert folic acid into dihydrofolate, which then can move down into methylfolate super easily. No problem. In humans, we're about 1% functional activity in our DHFR enzyme compared to mice. So us doing uh, research on mice and directly equating that to human uh, is incorrect. And so all this folic acid is, is in, in, the, in the diet is causing massive issues. And I have research papers on that. We're going to get to that too. But I, want, I wanted to say that real quick. Um, now, with MTHFR and mental illness, remember that if your methylation system is so important that it handles turning on and off genes and you have 18 other thousand genes in the human body and methylation turns them on and off, you don't have people doing their jobs all the time, their entire life that they're awake around the world. That would be very inefficient. They would die of exhaustion. They'd run out of resources. It's the same for your own genes. Your genes turn off when they're not needed. They turn on when they're needed. And Mm -hmm. so most of your genes are always methylated. When your gene is methylated, it's turned off. It is not producing any enzyme. So Mm -hmm. most of the time your MTHFR gene is methylated. It's not turned on unless it's needed to be turned on. That's to conserve resources. Otherwise, you'd be eating all day long. You would be... (laughs) Uh, skin and bones because you'd just be running out of resources. Um, and so when a stimulus is triggered to make more methylfolate, then that happens and it turns back off again. So with mental illness, if your methylation status, in your case, for example, you had low folate, you had uh, low B12, and then by result, you had high homocysteine, most likely. Mm-hmm. I did. Okay. So high homocysteine will shatter your ability to make neurotransmitters of any, of, well, not any, of any type. It will shatter your ability to make dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, and it will increase glutamate, which increases anxiety and destruction of your brain. It will increase histamine, which causes headaches, um, irritability, insomnia, like glutamate. Um, so you have these bad high levels of neurotransmitters 
and you have very low levels of the ones that help us with motivation, libido, healthy mood, memory, learning. Um, and uh, so then, yeah, you struggle. And then let's say you went to the doctor and you had dental work done and you were given laughing gas in that situation. And then let's say they prescribed you more folic acid instead of methylfolate and you weren't eating. I mean, you were, you're a vegetarian, but you weren't a, you weren't eating veggies. You were more of a carbitarian. Let's face it. A lot of <laughs> vegetarians were carbitarians. Um, I was, I, I tried being a vegetarian for a while to see my health and I felt horrible, but I did it wrong. Um, I mean, Novak Djokovic is doing pretty good, um, being a vegetarian. So homocysteine really eliminates your body's ability to, to make neurotransmitters and to process them and balance them. And why is that? Because high levels of homocysteine are associated with lower levels of methylfolate, which comes from the antigen of our enzyme. And remember you have methylfolate and methylcobalamin as a tag team duo. You need both. So if you're just supplementing with methylfolate and you have low amounts of methylcobalamin or low amounts of B12, then you could be still struggling with mental illness and it keeps going. Let's say you have sufficient methylfolate and you have sufficient B12, but you're still struggling. Your homocysteine is still high despite you taking B12 and folate. Well, how in the hell can that be? Because at the intersection of B12 and of folate of the methyl forms, there's an enzyme that is very, very sensitive to what's called oxidative stress. And oxidative stress, we all know as a term of called free radicals. Free radicals, if you have high levels of free radicals, then that enzyme turns off. And so homocysteine levels are not recycled or lowered. It actually will be converting uh, homocysteine into glutathione, which is your body's primary antioxidant to get rid of these free radicals or oxidative stressors, which is a beautiful system back, by the way. Um, so if you're struggling with high homocysteine and if you tried, be, you know, methylfolate, you've tried methylcobalamin, they're not working. You've tried choline, you've tried betaine, still not working. You've tried B6, still not working. You've tried zinc, still not working. You've got to add glutathione. You've got to add, you know, significant levels of glutathione as the S acetyl form of glutathione is the most stable. Um, and biopterin is the compound that is not talked about by people. Biopterin is, is what is it is called a cofactor. And so enzymes require cofactor. I'm surprised we haven't talked about this yet. So cofactors make the enzyme actually able to do the work. You have a car in your driveway and if your car is an electric car, if there's no charge in the battery, it don't go. If you got a gas or diesel powered car, it's not going. So, but they're fully functional. They're just not going. So if you have a fully functional empty Javar enzyme, no variance at all, you can have an empty Javar type, uh, low activity. If you have low levels of this cofactor and a cofactor again, makes the empty Javar enzyme perform. So if you're low in riboflavin, the empty Javar enzyme is compromised. It can't perform. And mm -hmm. so if you have an MCGFR 677 homozygous variant like yourself or compound like I do, or even if you don't have any MTGFR genetic variations, you've done genetic testing. You're like, God, I swore I would have the MTGFR gene variant. Mm -hmm. I've got all these symptoms. My homocysteine is sky high. Uh, I've got mood issues. I've got depression issues. I had recurrent miscarriages. Like, oh, yeah, I was put on laughing gas. I'm hypothyroid. I'm deficient in vitamin B2. Uh, I'm taking high dose folic acid. You created unknowingly having a very significant like MTGFR uh, pseudo variation in your body because you got it dirty. That's a concept of dirty genes. The, the concept is simply you can have a genetic variation born, which increases your vulnerability to things, but you can also create your own vulnerability of your own MTGFR gene by adding these things that conventional medicine is telling you to do to take five milligrams of folic acid, you're hypothyroid, you're low in vitamin B2, uh, you're taking laughing gas, um, you're eating, you know, you're a vegetarian, you're not eating red meat, um, and you're not, sub, you know, not supplementing with 
uh, folates and, and B12s that are high quality. Now you have an MTFR gene variant worse than mine and Carlin's because you know you've you've dirtied your MTFR enzyme to the point where it can't function, even though you don't have a gene variant. 